but a lot of scientists now are saying that actually because of all the changes and the acceleration in the many uh, ways, different types of use of resources and generation of waste, we are actually leaving the Anthropocene, which is an era, a geological era, where the planet is being now marked by changes caused by humans. And you, you can read, you can, you can look more on here. This term was coined by, by Stormer back in the 1980s. So there are a lot of pressure on the planet at this moment. The human growth pressure. And there is the 2080 dilemma, what that means. About 20% of the population nowadays are rich people. And about 80% live in poor conditions. And we already have these problems. If everyone is going to be, if the other 80% are going to live the same lifestyle as this 20% big problem. We already have a lot of ecosystems loss, so there is the 60% loss dilemma, which means once more than 60% of an, an ecosystem is changed, it's gone. You can't recover it. And there is a discussion going back to the CO2 emissions, the level in PPM, what is the level where it should be, where it should peak? Should it be 350? Should it be 450? Should it be 550? There is a discussion. Some people say that if we go over 450, the temperature will change more than two degrees, the climate change the temperature, the average te temperature in the, in the planet. So there is a lot of, of pressure on the planet. And the question is, will we be able to timely attain, attain a sustainable society before we are led to disaster? Well, that's the introduction that I wanted to give you. That's the background. And now let's go into electrochemistry a little bit. What can electrochemistry do to help preserve the environment? Well, there are many areas where electrochemistry can help. I'm going to use, adapt some ideas from Frank Walsh. For instance, we can avoid pollution. Electrochemistry can contribute to clean electrosynthesis. Electrochemistry, as you know, can be used to do electrosynthesis. Electrochemistry can be used to recycle valuable materials like precious metal electro deposition. Electrochemistry can be used, there are, there are a lot of polluted sites throughout, throughout the world and electrochemistry can, use, can be used to remediate these polluted sites, for instance using electrodialysis. And as you had a wonderful seminar last Friday by Professor Facibello talking about sensors. So electrochemistry can contribute a lot in monitoring and sensors. Professor Facibello gave you a lot of information last Friday on sensors used mostly in the liquid phase. <coughs> electrochemistry was, bec was becoming a few years ago, a few decades ago, a science there was not very, not a lot of new things happening. But more recently, because of, of all the problems and because of the explosion in the use of electronics, now we need batteries. And so electrochemistry now is a hot, hot area of research for energy conversion. Our laboratory also works in that. I'm not going to be talking about this. And we also can use electrochemistry to avoid corrosion. Electrochemistry can help in the choice of materials. Electrochemistry can help in protecting these materials. And finally, e electrochemistry, once you generate waste wa wastewater, once, once you generate waste, electrochemistry can, can help in the removal of the contaminants, be them 
metal ions, be them organics or inorganics. And electrochemistry can also use, be helpful in disinfection of water because clean water with such a large population is also a problem. And my, my talk today, although we work in other areas in our laboratory, will be concentrated mainly in this area, in our relationship with uh, what we call environmental electrochemistry, removal of uh, contaminants from, uh, from wastewater. So what are now focusing on wastewater treatment? What are the different processes that can be used? And I'll be talking about this different uh, five processes and I will give you examples of contributions from our laboratory in these two areas. So going to electroflotation, what is electroflotation? As the, the name says here, you have a process where you float the pollutants to the surface of the solution. And what you do is you, you do simply water electrolysis. You electrolyze water, you generate bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen. As these bubbles go up in the solution, they will float the pollutants. It was first proposed a long time ago, mostly to separate valuable minerals from ores. And it's very effective for instance, if you want to separate oil or low-density suspended solids from a solution. It's still being improved, but is widely available commercially if you want to, to see a electroflotation cell working. There are lots of videos in, in, in YouTube that you can see. Since I, I gave this uh, presentation in, in, the, in the Brazilian Chemical Society meeting, I also showed them then, what was the Brazilian contribution? In electroflotation, since it's qu a quite a mature area, very, little very few contributions. Doing what I call a, a simple search. So I'm not saying it's a complete search, that I found every paper. But I found eight, I found eight papers, so I say there, is at least, there are at least eight there may be more. And the first paper was published in 2004 in Química Nova, in Portuguese, and it's a contribution from the Institute of Chemistry of San Carlos, just, just across the road, um, by Crispillo and Rezende. And I also presented what is in this air in, in electroflotation of the eight papers, which is the one that has the highest number of citations. It's a paper brought by the Univer Federal University of Alagoas, a contribution of the group of Marília Goulart with uh, Josualdo Tonho Tonholo, uh, something that they are doing uh, financed by Petrobras. Okay, going to electrocoagulation. What is the difference between this and the previous process? We're also doing electrochemistry, but now instead of generating oxygen, in the, in the anode, what we are doing now, we are dissolving. We are dissolving the anode. And in the cathode, we are generating gas bubbles and OH minus ions. So the OH mi I minus ions will precipitate a lot of, if you have inorganics, it will precipitate the, orga the inorganics. The hydrogen bubbles will help this precipitates to to float to the surface. So this will permit the removal of suspended solids as well as oil and greases, colloidal particles, also microorganisms and algae. And it's also quite well known, but uh, available commercially, but it's still being improved. Here, Brazil, we Brazilians have a little, a few more contributions. I detected 15 papers. The first, the first paper was also from the Institute of Chemistry of São Carlos. 
back in 2005, G Professor Germano Tremliosi and Pasquale. And the paper that has the largest number of citations is a contribution from the University of Santa Maria in the South by Ayrton Martins and colleagues. And as you can see, there are of the 15 papers, two papers were published in one of the journals of the Brazilian Chemical Society, Chimica Nova. Well, let's move on to the next topic, uh, the next uh, way electrochemistry can contribute to remove wastewater, which is to remove metals from wastewater, what we call electrolytic metal recovery. So basically what we are doing here is reducing a cation, uh, a metal cation, is being reduced in the cathode. So commonly it involves two steps. You have to collect and then this cathode as more metal is being deposited, it grows and then you have to take away the metal that, strip the metal that you collected. There are many types of reactors available. So it's applied mainly in the metal surface finish industry and a lot of use in the printed circuit board manufacturing industry. And it's not necessarily a complete solution because many waste, a lot of wastewater, besides having metal contamination, has other contaminations. So you have to, to, ha to couple this process with other, other processes. One advantage of this, what we call in electrochemistry, this cathodic processes, is that we can use three-dimensional electrodes. And to those that are not electrochemists, I will explain why this is an advantage. The problem is, is many times the concentration of metals is very low and the reaction occurs at the electrode surface. So you have to have to get your reactant to the surface. So you have what we call a mass transport problem. If you have an electrode that is three-dimensional and if you flow the solution through this electrode, you improve very much the transport of the reagent to the reaction site. So it's very important, it's very good to be able to have three-dimensional electrodes. And that's possible in what we call cathodic processes, processes that involve reduction. The Brazilian contribution here is increasing. Now we have, I detected, at least 30 papers. And the first paper was back in 1997 by the group of Professor Rodney Bertazzoli, who is, uh, I would call him, uh, the pioneer in environmental electrochemistry in our country. And it's actually on the use of a three-dimensional electrode, reticulated vitreous carbon. 